I'm Tom Mitchell. I'm a professor here at Carnegie Mellon in the machine learning department. And I'd like to explain to you some research that I'm interested in. It's in the area of applying machine learning to kindergarten through 12th grade education. And uh, my motivation is pretty simple. I think that this decade is the decade when finally we have an opportunity for AI to make a significant impact on education. My reasoning is that number one, we have known for a long time, for decades, that one-on-one -on -one tutoring by humans to students has a tremendous impact on their education outcome. Uh, we've known since 1984, a famous study by Bloom that showed that uh, students who received human tutoring uh, would outperform classroom students who didn't get human tutoring by two sigma. That means 95% uh, of the tutor students would outscore the classroom students, a big effect. Second, we now have finally uh, in 2020, a collection of human, of computer-based tutors, which are much more affordable than humans, who have taught millions of students. And those computer-based tutors have now collected teaching experience much greater than a human teacher could ever collect in a hundred year career. So we have training data to learn how to teach better. This summer, I came across a data set from a company, Squirrel AI, which is a kindergarten through 12th grade computer tutoring company. And they provided a data set to us, which covers learning by a large number of students of elementary math courses. The data looks like this. Uh, each line here is a particular event that occurred during a one and a half hour roughly learning session where a student was trying to learn a particular elementary math concept. Uh, they started out by a pretest where they were asked some test questions to assess what they knew going in and then they were uh, provided some videos to watch. They were given some practice questions to answer, um, some more videos. They could study the solution if they liked of the questions that they answered correctly or incorrectly. Uh, they could skip videos if they didn't want to do them. And then at the end, uh, there's a post-test to determine how much the student had learned. So this is the kind of data that we have, but what makes it particularly interesting is we have this for 125,000 students who are learning roughly 1,000 different topics and watching roughly 10,000 different videos, being asked roughly 60,000 different kinds of questions and adding up to uh, a data file with 62 million time-stamped rows like the data we were looking at before. So the question is, what can we learn from this data that would be helpful? So if you think about it, there are a number of things you might try to learn. Um, which video is the best way to teach a particular concept to a particular student? What practice problem should we present next to optimize learning? Is the student likely to drop out? And many other questions. So these are some of the opportunities for what we might try to learn from this data. What are some of the learning methods that are appropriate? Well, one approach that seems very relevant is reinforcement learning. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with reinforcement learning. Uh, it was used to train AlphaGo famously to beat the top human Go players. Um, in reinforcement learning, the problem is framed as learning a policy or a control uh, policy for choosing actions at any given state in a, a state space search. So for example, in Go, uh, the states are the board states of Go, the actions are the legal moves, and a reward function is defined that effectively defines what is the uh, what's good and what's bad in terms of the actions we want to choose. And so given that framing of the problem, uh, reinforcement learning was used in AlphaGo 
to learn an optimal policy for choosing the action at every given board state with the goal of learning to choose actions that maximize reward. Now think of this teaching education application. It's very analogous. Here, the state that we have at each time is the student state, their knowledge state, what do they understand and not, maybe also their motivational state. What are the actions? Well, these are the teaching actions that are available. Should we ask a particular practice problem? Should we show a particular video? And the reward, of course, is the effectiveness of those actions in achieving learning. Um, how well does the student do on the post-test, for example? And so here, I think reinforcement learning is a very interesting approach that we could consider. There are differences, though, here between, say, AlphaGo's domain and this domain. Here we have previously collected data collected according to whatever the current policy of the company Squirrel AI is. And so in terms of trying to learn an optimal policy, this is a kind of off policy data set that um, presents particular technical problems that we don't have when we apply it to learning Go. But that's okay, it's an interesting research question. Um, thinking again about how we might learn, I think another approach that I'd love to explore is training a large neural network to predict multiple things, actually, for all those learning problems we were just looking at. But that um, as a side effect of training, learns latent representations, embeddings, for each of the things that are involved in this problem. So we should have an embedding for each student, for each question, for each video, for each teacher, for each school, et cetera. And use those as uh, representations that we can learn from the aggregate data that can then be used for learning specific uh, prediction tasks, like what about this student? Which video should they look at if we want them to learn a particular concept? So those are some of the ideas. Um, I'm interested in this problem actually for two different reasons. One is that I think education really does matter and we have an opportunity to make a difference, but also because this application, like most, uh, provides a grounded case study for looking at much more generic problems, uh, like modeling very complex time series or reinforcement learning or multitask learning. There are also some future opportunities that I've been talking with Squirrel AI about augmenting this data set, for example, with audio and video of students uh, captured from their uh, computer microphone and camera. So I think there are going forward quite a few interesting thesis type problems available. So in case you're interested, please uh, contact me. I am considering taking on a new student, either a PhD or a master's, and here's my email address. So I uh, look forward to hearing from you.